When you switch to the advanced studio task in NX, for example from the studio task, the camera property changes to perspective by default, but that can be disabled here. Also the material property will be changed. We no longer have this standard blue, but a gray material instead. In fact, no material was actually assigned here. The background adapts and the lightning as well as possibly the floor. So various properties that are visible only in the advanced studio. Of course, you can adjust these properties. You can define a background or a floor on which the objects are reflected or cast a shadow. In addition, there are so-called system scenes in NX, which we can use as a template. There are two types of scenes available, one's the scenes with a 2D background image, which for example just represents a color gradient, or which just has one single background color. And there are so-called 3D system scenes as well. There are domes, for example hemispheres, on which a picture is projected. This hemisphere moves with the rotations of our objects. Additional properties such as floor mirrors are very individual, but can also be adjusted here. These scenes are divided into three groups. On the one side, studio, a relatively neutral environment. Number two is outdoor, which is less neutral with very complex images in the background and complex lightning scenarios. And at least we've got the indoor scenes which use 3D domes or 2D images as a background. I select one of these scenes with a left click and you can already see it suddenly affects a ground shadow. This is of course because of the fact that the lightning adapts a bit, but also because a ground shadow is activated at all. The floor can be edited in this gallery. You can hide the ground or you can show and hide the shadows or the reflection. The fine settings, the fine tuning however, takes place in the scene editor, which I show you later. In this video I want to demonstrate how you can edit this dome, which I have already enabled. You can see that the dome is moving parallel to the rotation of our components. But that's just a 2D picture at all. You can also define this yourself. And pick a picture from the internet for example. And add it to your scene via scene editor. Via backgrounds we have the option 2D background and environment. In this case we have to use environment to create such a dome. The dome type is currently infinite, that means that everything is positioned within the dome. And you see if I zoom out too far, the image is strongly distorted. That can happen sometimes when loading the domes as well. Then you have to zoom in here until you discover your objects at some point and the size fits. Alternatively, you can also select the dome type finite here. Thereby this hemisphere is going to be visible and the hemisphere can be increased manually via environment. Below size, that does not have to be that much. 800 millimeters should be sufficient in this case. If you zoom something in, you really only have the dome and its geometry visible without outside environment. This background image is used for image-based lightning at the same time. I select a reflective material. I select those via system materials. Metal. Chrome. You can easily assign this to your objects via the pressed left mouse button. Then you can see how this dome also reflects on the material which increases, of course, the realism effect. It may be that you have turned on reflections, but do not see any reflections on the floor. It is obvious here that the sandy ground does not reflect, of course. 
But if you still want reflections, then you have to increase the reflectivity of the floor. But this is done via the scene editor. Via environment, you will find ground reflection. The value here is zero and will have to be increased until the floor reflects. Now you could disable the overall reflection via show floor reflection. There are also background scenes in the systems which by default have a reflection in the ground enabled with a certain degree of reflection.